guys and welcome to Hari Astro. In today's video, we will be talking about hepatic cancer, which is also commonly known as liver cancer. So let's get started. So what is liver cancer? Liver cancer is cancer that begins in the cells of your liver. Your liver is a large sized organ that sits in the upper right portion of your abdomen, beneath the diaphragm and above your stomach. Metastatic liver cancer may occur sometimes because cancer may spread to the liver from another area in the body, such as the colon, the lung or the breast, and spreads to the liver from these specific organs, and this is called metastatic liver cancer. So there are two main forms of liver cancer. So we have primary liver cancer, which is the actual tumor which begins and grows in the liver itself. And then we have metastatic liver cancer, which is when we have the primary tumor or cancer cells in another part of the body, such as the colon, the lung, or the breast, and these cancer cells can actually spread to other parts. And the liver is actually a very commonly affected organ in many different types of metastatic cancer disease. So now that we know what liver cancer is all about, let's take a closer look at the signs and symptoms of liver cancer. So some of the signs and symptoms of liver cancer can include jaundice, which is the yellowing of the skin and the eyes, the patient may experience abdominal pain, unexpected weight loss, an enlarged liver, which is called hepatomegaly, an enlarged spleen, which is called splenomegaly, swelling in the abdomen or fluid buildup, which is called ascites. The patient may also experience fatigue, nausea and vomiting, back pain, itching, fever, and a full feeling after a small meal. Now let's talk about some of the risk factors of liver cancer. So some of the risk factors of liver cancer include chronic infections with hepatitis B virus or hepatitis C virus. Usually patients who are chronic hepatitis B or hepatitis C sufferers have extreme liver damage. The inflammation leads to cirrhosis and eventually the cirrhosis will lead to liver cancer. Another risk factor is liver cirrhosis itself. So liver cirrhosis is not just caused by chronic viral infection, it can be caused by alcoholic liver cirrhosis. We can also have autoimmune liver cirrhosis. So any sort of progressive and irreversible scarring to the liver can actually contribute to liver cancer. There's also certain inherited diseases such as hemochromatosis and Wilson's disease. So iron overload and copper overload in the liver can lead to liver cancer because it also contributes to long-standing inflammation, scarring, and then cancer in the liver. Another risk factor is diabetes. So people with this blood sugar disorder have a greater risk of liver cancer than those who actually don't have diabetes. Another risk factor is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is the accumulation of fat in the liver. Also exposure to aflatoxins, and these are poisons produced by moles that grow on crops that are stored poorly. So crops such as grains and nuts can become contaminated with aflatoxins, which can end up in foods made of these products and actually destroy the liver and lead to cancer within the liver. Also, excessive alcohol consumption leads to the irreversible liver damage and increases the risk of liver cancer. So now let's talk about some types of liver cancer. Because the liver is made up of several different types of cells, several different types of tumors can form there. Some of these are benign, meaning they're non-cancerous, and some of them are cancerous, and can spread to other parts of the body, which mean metastasize. So these tumors have different causes and are treated differently. So now let's talk about the benign tumors of the liver. So some of the benign tumors of the liver include hemangiomas, hepatic adenomas, focal nodular hyperplasias, cysts, lipomas, fibromas, leomyomas, and none of these tumors are treated like liver cancer. They may need to be removed surgically if they cause pain or bleeding. But some of the more dangerous one or the malignant masses of the liver include the hepatocellular carcinoma and a cholangiocarcinoma. And the hepatocellular carcinoma is actually a tumor which begins within the liver itself. And the cholangiocarcinoma is actually connected to the bile duct system within the liver. So we'll discuss each of these in a bit more detail now. So we begin with the benign tumors of the liver. So as we mentioned, the first one was a hepatic hemangioma. This is a blood vessel tumor that only requires treatment if it bleeds. And above here is a picture of what the hepatic hemangioma actually looks like. 
We can have hepatic adenomas, and this is a type of benign liver tumor again, which may cause abdominal pain or blood loss, and surgical removal is usually recommended. And this is actually what the hepatic adenoma looks like. We then have the focal nodular hyperplasias, or FNHs, and this tumor is made up of several different types of cells, including liver cells, bile duct cells, and connective tissue cells. And as you can see, it's spread across the entire portion of the liver. So continuing with more benign tumors of the liver, we have the hepatic cysts. So these are abnormal sacs in the liver that may contain fluid or a solid mass of cells. So this is actually what the hepatic cyst looks like. We can then have hepatic lipomas, and lipomas are benign tumors of connective tissue composed of a well-encapsulated nodule of fat and may contain fibrous tissue. We then have hepatic fibromas, and they are composed of fibrous or connective tissue. And this is actually an image of what a hepatic fibroma looks like. We then have hepatic leiomyomas, and these are also known as fibroids, and are benign smooth muscle tumors. So now moving on to the more dangerous guys, we have the malignant tumors, which go on to cause liver cancer. And the first one is the hepatocellular carcinoma. So this is the most common form of primary cancer in the liver. And primary liver cancer is the cancer that began in the liver. It can also occur as a single tumor or many small cancer nodules throughout the liver. And primary liver cancer will commonly spread to the lungs, the portal vein, to the kidneys, and to the portal lymph nodes. And this image on my right is actually what the hepatocellular carcinomas look like. And then another form of malignant disease, we have the intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma, which is actually the bile duct cancer, but it can occur in the liver because the bile duct system actually infiltrates the liver quite largely. So as described by its name, this cancer starts where the bile duct connects to the liver, and between 10 to 15% of liver cancers are of this type. This type of cancer commonly spreads or metastasizes to the lymph nodes, the lung, and the bone marrow. Now let's talk briefly about the staging of liver cancer. So stage 1 of liver cancer means that the tumor remains in the liver and has not spread to another organ or location. So if we take a closer look at this image, we see stage 1. Our tumor remains within the liver and has not spread out to any other organs. Stage 2 liver cancer means there are either several small tumors that remain in the liver or one tumor that has reached a blood vessel. So as we can see here, we have several small tumors within the liver or one of these tumors have actually reached a hepatic blood vessel. Stage 3 means that there are various large tumors or one tumor has reached a main large blood vessel. So we have several large tumors or one of these tumors have actually infiltrated a very large vessel. And stage four means that the cancer has metastasized, meaning it's spread to the other parts of the body. So again, common other parts of metastasis of liver cancer include the kidneys, the lungs, the lymph node system, and the bone marrow. So moving on, let's talk about the diagnosis of liver cancer. So blood tests can help us, and usually the levels of alpha fetoprotein, which is a specific marker for liver cancer, may be elevated in at least 70% of patients with liver cancer and can help us with the diagnosis of liver cancer. We can also use imaging studies such as a CT or MRI scan with contrast of the liver and these are the preferred imaging technique for detecting the location and extent of blood supply to the cancer. We can also do a liver biopsy to diagnose the liver cancer and this is performed to a sample tissue from the lesion in the liver which is analyzed by a pathologist to confirm the suspected diagnosis of liver cancer. And finally, let's talk about the treatment of liver cancer. So surgery to remove the tumor can be done, and sometimes an operation to remove the tumor and a small portion of healthy liver tissue that surrounds the tumor can be done, and this is called a partial hepatectomy. We can also do liver transplant surgery, and here the liver is removed and replaced with a healthy liver from a donor. We can also try ablative therapy, and here a surgeon uses radio waves, electromagnetic waves, and heat or alcohol directly on the tumor to shrink it or prevent its growth. We can also try radiation therapy, and here radio wave beams are directed at the tumor, killing a significant number of cancer cells within the tumor. And we can also try chemotherapy, and this is when drugs are injected into the bloodstream to kill cancer cells. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on liver cancer. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. And don't forget to turn on your bell notifications so you'll be notified every time we have a new upload. If you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you may do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.